And that's partly because the young California condor coming off the nest weighs substantially less than the, than the adult, but also built into the wing feather. The juvenile California condor has more curve built down. And I discovered this only recently when I was looking at, at the California condors in the museums and I got all some feathers and I actually set up a light bar. And Well, not that, but when you laid them together, the juvenile condor feather just parted away. It was clearly more of a curve built into it. So I think it was probably just pure energy dynamics is involved there. It probably, the combination of the bird's light weight, on top of that, young California condors, as well as a lot of other birds of prey, in their first year, have a larger wing surface area than the adults. They actually have longer flight feathers. That's not true of the primaries, it's true of the secondaries. If you look at a young California condor, when they're molting, when they're molting into the next generation of feathers, that next generation of feathers is shorter than the juvenile bee. So they have a larger wing surface area, that curvature is deeper, and it probably is a net result in energy savings as far as you know, allowing the bird to stay a lot longer, because the young California condor has a lot against it. Probably when there's a healthy California condor population, the young California condors probably join age groups, similar age groups, and they just basically fought amongst themselves at a carcass. In today's scenario, the young birds have to sort of go up against adults at a carcass, and they usually don't fare all that great at the carcass. They're usually excluded. So, if you can take a, take an example from the vultures of Africa, the young, say, Rupel's uh, griffins usually forage well out beyond the territories of the adult Rupel's griffons. For example, it's like the, the adult Rupel's griffons pretty much concentrate in nest areas and don't radiate terribly far from those. But the youngsters form these crushes that wander well out beyond that. They don't have to. They don't have to compete with the adults at a, at a, at a carcass. And it'd be interesting to see if a similar sort of thing exists in the, in the Rupel's griffon or the African white back or whatever. And in the case of California, it's in a healthy population, I, I don't think it'd probably be. Uh, out of the realm of possibility that the youngsters probably form these, these sort of same age categories and wandered much widely, much further. They might have been the ones that ended up on the, the Columbia River up in, up in, up in Washington.